Internet. Good morning or good afternoon. Um, Benjamin Cadet from the Eclipse Foundation. I wanted to talk about some cool uh, open source projects that we have for doing Internet of Things applications. Um, well, first, uh, I mean, you guys know the Internet of Things, right? Connecting everything. Uh, all the analysts agree or disagree, sort of, to say that there will be billions or tens of billions of devices in, in the next decade connected to the Internet. But what they often don't mention is that that also means we need developers, right? Just like a couple years ago when mobile was the, 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 big, uh, the big topic, um, there, there was a need for, for Android uh, developers and, and iOS developers and stuff. And the very same analyst that said at the time that there would need to be uh, one million developer mobile developers, they were, uh, they were off by, uh, by one other magnitude, actually. So yeah, um, uh, Vision Mobile says that by 2020, there will need to be um, 4.5 million uh, IoT developers. Good thing is, right now we have nine, 10 million uh, Java developers. So um, a bunch of companies um, are working on uh, I, uh, open source IoT stack for, for Java. And uh, we have at the, uh, at the Eclipse Foundation some, some nice projects for doing, uh, for, for doing IoT. So essentially the idea is that we have a stack that allows to, um, to turn um, a device into um, um, a gateway, a Java powered gateway that will allow to make sure that the device always has proper internet connectivity because that's what the Internet of Things is about, right? And uh, there is a whole ecosystem of protocols and, 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 um, and, and, and frameworks that, that build on top of this framework for, for solutions like home automation or industrial automation. And yeah, basically uh, what we're gonna do is uh, do a deep dive into some of the, of the projects that you might want to use or that you might want to, to, to come check out on, on our booth on, on the second floor. So in a nutshell, so I thought it was a good idea to pick uh, the same theme as the FOSM website, but looks like the purple is a bit too dark. Uh, what is end-to-end -end IoT? A very simplified um, uh, IoT architecture would be on one end, in your house, in your car, you have a set of sensors, a set of actuators. Most of the time, uh, those sensors don't really have internet, direct internet connectivity. So at some point we will need a gateway, something that will bridge the physical world to the, to the, to the internet. And um, ideally, well, not ideally, but in, in, in many cases, you will have some sort of server infrastructure. You don't want to, uh, at least unless IPv6, I, IPv6 isn't, uh, isn't there completely, you don't want to talk to the devices directly, right? They might not be always connected. They are battery powered. They report their data only once in a while. So yes, there is a gateway, but there is also another sort of proxy to the device that is uh, a server infrastructure. And we're gonna talk about what are the mechanisms to have the kind of um, server abstraction and, and server API to reaching uh, the actual sensors on the field. And at some point you need also to do uh, an inter interaction with, with the, 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 the actual devices. So we're gonna talk about some of the solutions for doing um, uh, mobile or for doing web, appi uh, web um, IoT applications. So the physical world, the sensors, the actuators, well, that's pretty simple, right? The sensors are for sensing what's happening, the temperature, your humidity, proximity sensors, how long, whatever. And the actuators are uh, controlling uh, uh, an electrical curtain, uh, to turning uh, a relay on or off. So how do you manipulate sensors and actuators in Java? Well, if you're running Linux, there is um, 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 a way to manipulate the, the, um, the, the devices right from your file system, right? You might have heard about SysFS, the, the, the devices that are mounted in your slash sys slash class uh, file hierarchy. You can uh, manipulate that directly as, as a file stream and you can uh, turn LEDs on or off like this, but you might not have access to the, to the full um, API for, I mean, if you're manipulating I squared two sensors or stuff like that, you don't want to, uh, to manipulate the SysFS directly from your Java file API. So at some point you need some native integration with the underlying OS. So in the case of the Raspberry Pi, which is something that I kind of use for, 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 for lots, lots, uh, lots of demos, there is a nice integration to the, the SysFS underlying API in the, in the form of Pi4j. Uh, so Pi4j is an, is an open source uh, library 
that basically very, uh, le looks very much like device I.O. And actually, I think now that device I.O. is becoming more and more standard, you might want to use that on the Raspberry Pi as well. Uh, but the APIs are, are actually very similar. Provide access to the GPIOs, uh, including uh, some more advanced sort of protocols like I2T, HPI. Uh, it's very mature and it also comes with support for a dedicated third party uh, shield that you might connect to your Raspberry Pi uh, that, uh, that themselves talk over I2T, but that, that have an extra uh, protocol layer. So if you don't want to recreate uh, the communication with the third party board yourself, uh, Pi4J. Uh, can take care of that for you. Wow. Uh, can I do something here? I can share with you. So in terms of code for, for doing GPIOs, no, it's not any better. It's actually very simple. You, um, You have a factory for creating, uh, for in instantiating your, your GPIO. So say that you have on, on pin number one uh, an LED that is connected. Well, you have a very simple uh, wrapper to your um, underlying uh, uh, GPIO. And then it's very easy to, to change the, the state of the LED, uh, turning low or high. Or even if you don't want to manage the, the, s the current state of the pin, in your uh, Java code, you can even toggle, and depending on the current state of the of the GPIO, it will toggle the status of the LED, for example. So that's for manipulating the the sensors, but that's not actually the trickiest part. The 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 um, where you actually need a framework to help you uh, to build your application is when it comes to the the actual gateway, the actual bridging to to the to the internet world. So yes, when you're prototyping, it might uh, it might be a Raspberry Pi. Uh, but when you're talking industrial um, IoT, you actually have ruggedized IoT gateways. So you have lots of GPIOs, like uh, lots of RS-232 uh, interfaces, maybe several internet interfaces, and they are ruggedized. They are meant to be uh, in a factory where it's very humid, maybe, and, and stuff like that. So this is where you want to run a framework that's going to allow you first to interact with the sensors, but also allow you to efficiently communicate uh, with the uh, with other devices or, or with the cloud. So the gateway's role is, is twofold. On, on one hand, you want to connect the sensors, and on the other hand, you want the gateway to help you manage basically all the devices attached to it, and you want also to manage the software, right? When you deploy an IoT solution, uh, you're usually talking about thousands of devices, cars, um, uh, uh, home automation uh, thermostats, stuff like that. And when there is a bug, you want to be able to, up to upgrade those devices, right? So for connecting, you need to use protocols that are efficient in terms of uh, bandwidth uh, consumption, in terms of battery consumption. So there are two uh, very popular protocols that uh, have uh, nice Java implementations. So one is CoAP, Constraint Application Protocol, Windows CoAP. Oh, that's very, very key. Have you guys heard of Kona, the recent uh, proposal to add a co-op API as part of uh, uh, OpenJDK? Uh, so co-op is basically HTTP over UDP. You replicate the, um, the REST mechanisms, uh, quit, post, get, etc. But on top of UDP, so as you have very, uh, very little overhead, uh, you can also do co-op over SMS, for example. So you can, in, in just a few hundreds uh, or even tens of bytes, you can do um, request response soft, soft workflows. And there is another protocol called MQTT, same question, Windows MQTT, best in all. MQTT, uh, it's a pub sub protocol, a messaging protocol. You have a server and you can um, uh, post messages, publish on sub topics, and you can have clients consuming data subscribing to the topics. So CoAP, the idea, again, this is HTTP over UDP. So th this is for sort of an ideal world, which might not be uh, today, uh, just yet, where all your devices are actually uh, provided with an IPv6 address or uh, uh, one way or the other uh, visible uh, on the internet, and you want to expose uh, the, uh, their, their sensors, their actuators, as, um, as REST endpoints, right? If you want to, to, uh, to ask the robot to walk, you will post uh, on the slash walk resource. If you want to get the current uh, 
color of an RGB LED, you will get on the slash red, slash green, slash blue um, uh, resources. So that's a very, uh, very simplified uh, of overview of co-op, but um, if you want to play with co-op in Java, there is a project called Californium, uh, which is meant to be either used as a, uh, a client uh, stack or server stack, which is kind of uh, the same in, in, in co-op anyways. And um, yeah, it includes ni a nice, um, nice feature that in addition to, to pure, uh, the pure co-op stack, you also have GTLS support. GTLS is uh, TLS SSL for, for datagrams, for UDP. So uh, in the form of Sandium, you can actually do uh, secured uh, co-ops and like uh, pre-shared key-based uh, authentication or certificate-based authentication. There is a, a, a bridge to, to do it all in TPP, which is kind of straightforward uh, because co-op really has the same uh, notion. And uh, yeah, manipulating co-op, uh, it's very simple. Basically, three cl classes you need to, to know. The resource is basically like the, 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 the servlet, which is where you, you enter to the get, the post, etc. You mount the resources on, on the co-op server and you start the server. So um, I won't uh, change the font color this time, but yeah, basically this is the co-op resource uh, in the exchange method, uh, in the, sorry, in the under um, get, under post, this is where you, just like for a servlet, this is where you would enter uh, to, to, to a request, a co-op request. There is also support for content type uh, in, in, in co-op, so you that way you can, uh, just like you would in HTTP, only in a much more uh, bandwidth efficient way. The, um, the content types are, are binary encoded. They are not like super long uh, HTTP uh, uh, exchange or HTTP headers. Um, MQTT, how does it work? It's a publish subscribe uh, mechanism. So you um, have a central uh, browser, central server, and the, uh, the endpoint will subscribe to a topic, uh, say that this mobile phone wants to be notified of uh, sensor uh, of values, updates for, for this schedule over there. Uh, if we know that the schedule is publishing on, on this topic hierarchy, we can subscribe and then at some point the schedule is gonna, is gonna publish uh, some data which we're gonna receive and you can have as many clients uh, subscribe to the, to the topic as, as you wish. So at Eclipse, the implementations live in the project called Eclipse Paho. So eclipse.org slash Paho is where you can download client for your language of choice. We have uh, lots of uh, lots of implementation, uh, C++, .NET, Python, Lua, Go, and Java. So the Java API is very simple. If you want to connect to a, a broker and start uh, subscribing to messages, you uh, initiate a connection with a, a broker. We host one uh, at Eclipse. It's free, of, it's free to use, free of charge, so it's open to, to anyone. Uh, you, you you define your, your callback code, so basically an interface with a message arrive um, uh, method, and then you connect with the broker, you start subscribing to whatever topic you're interested in, and you will start receiving messages. And the messages, this is one of the, I mean, some people hate uh, this fact about MQTT. I love this. Uh, an MQTT message is actually, the, the payload of the message is, is just a byte array. So it's up to you to put in there either a string, either a, a base64 encoded JPEG uh, image, a, a zip file, a JSON document. Uh, you might want to use maybe the topic to, to define the content type, but, but it's, it's really very flexible uh, in, in, in what kind of messages you can, you can transfer. In terms of open source server implementations, there is a C implementation called Mosquito, and there is a Java implementation called Moquette, uh, based on, on Methi. Um, so yeah, that's, that's for connecting. And then for managing, and this is where we, uh, we come to the project called Eclipse Cura. The idea is that your apps, you need a container, right, for, 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 for your apps. Uh, you want to be able to install and install your apps easily, maybe manage the dependencies between the apps and search between themselves or between apps and thir third party libraries. Uh, you want to do all of this over the air, ideally. You want to be able to manage the gateway itself. If you want to use the cellular uh, connectivity, then you want to be able to, um, uh, to manage the, the PPP connection of your cellular modem uh, from uh, right from the framework. You want to have a nice abstraction layer for, for all your sensors. So that's the Eclipse Cura project. 
So again, if it's double slash Tora, uh, the idea is that on top of the JVM, uh, it leverages OSPI. So most of the, uh, the Tora functionalities are actually um, OSPI uh, based on, on some OSPI standards uh, on steroids, I would say. Like uh, for uh, managing the software packages, it's using OSPI deployment admin and adding some, some, uh, some stuff on top of that. Um, and yeah, basically you will have um, all, all the features for managing the network connectivity, uh, all the basic services of the gateway, uh, as we will see in, in the next slide. And then on top of all these built-in features, you, uh, you can host your own application. Installing Tura is very simple. I mean, especially on the Raspberry Pi, there is Debian package that is ready to use. So you just download the Debian package, install it on, on the Raspberry Pi. And yeah, the built-in features of Tura would be in the form of managing the network. Like if you want to, to set up a firewall rules or if you want to, to do um, network address translation, uh, configure a TPP server modem and stuff like that, this is uh, something that you can do with Tura. If you want to manage and have a, a good overview of all the uh, OSPI bundles running in Tura, you can also um, uh, have access to that. You have a an OSPI console. You actually also have a shell that you can easily access. Uh, you don't have to SSH into the into the device from the right from the Tura interface. And you also have an abstraction of the IoT communication. In the in the previous slides, I mentioned MQTT. When you want to talk uh, to an MQTT server, you can manage all the connection, disconnection uh, by hand in your code. But in, in the context of IoT, this will happen uh, a lot, right? To lose the connection or to switch from uh, 3G to a fallback Ethernet connection because 3G <coughs> just died or you're out of, out of battery or, or, or whatever. So you want the server to make sure that you're always connected, uh, not only to the internet, but also to your MQTT server, right? You, you don't want to manage that in each of, of your application. And all the all those services, uh, built-in services, they are access available as as, as APIs, right? As OSPI services. Like if you want to have access to, if you have a GPS connected to your to your device, automatically a position service, an OSPI position service, will be available, allowing you to track the position of the device. If you want to do some uh, crypto stuff, you want to secure your uh, uh, and cipher your MQTT payloads, there is a crypto service that will easily allow you to to have access to. Uh, AES and, and, and stuff like that. So how does it look? Uh, very, very quickly, I do have a Raspberry Pi over here. And if I connect to the Raspberry Pi, I can actually access the, uh, the web, the, uh, the Tura web, in web interface, which allows me to easily access all the, uh, the features I mentioned earlier for, say, network management. If I want to add a, a new uh, a new interface like a TPP zero uh, interface, which will connect to a uh, to a cellular modem, I, I could con configure that from here. If I want to do a firewall port forwarding, as I said earlier, we have all the UI for that. Um, if I want to access um, my uh, OSPI console, see what are all the bundles that are running, are they active? Are, are there some uh, missing dependencies? If I want to do some quick, uh, some quick um, shell uh, debugging, I want to, to see what's happening on my device. I can execute commands over the air. And at some point, what I will do is I will install my own apps. Out of the box, if you install the, the Tura Debian package, you will, you will get uh, well basically the features at, at the top of the, uh, of, the, of the UI. And then as soon as you want to, say, monitor a temperature, then uh, you will create your own app, you will use uh, the Pi4j API, you will use the uh, MQTT service that comes with Tura to, to have an always on, always available MQTT connection. And yeah, that's what I did here. I installed an app. Uh, this app is available over here in the UI. Um, who, who is familiar with OSPI in the room I could have asked earlier, I guess? Oh, yeah, a third of the room, maybe. Um, so basically, uh, basically this app um, is um, is made of a lot of, of OSPI services. Some of them are actually uh, ex exposing um, some uh, some settings uh, using a config admin, and so automatically in the in the uh, in the OSPI in the Cora web UI, those settings are, are accessible. I can change uh, 
Yeah, for example, what is the uncertainty topic I want to use for publishing the, the, the data that I get from my, from, my, uh, from my application. And yeah, if essentially this app is now running and what I can, uh, what I can do is use um, a very simple um, web UI that I did, which is pure HTML and JavaScript. I'm doing in this UI MQTT over WebSocket and automatically, hopefully, oh no, for some reason, well, you guys can come at, at, the, at the exit booth and I have a much cooler demo with lots of, yeah, for some reason I might not have uh, internet access here. I'm sharing the Wi-Fi from my laptop, so this might not work. Um, but yeah, that's that's how the um, the app uh, in a nutshell. That's how the app the app is built. A bunch of uh, of services. One that I did uh, I did create myself a central service that is exposing my own abstraction of uh, what is the temperature sensor, what is the LED that I have on my uh, on my uh, greenhouse, and that fires uh, whatever event. Uh, need to be fired uh, with the event admin whenever something is changed. And then there is another uh, service, I mean, another um, declarative service that is consuming my central service, consuming the built-in um, Cora and QTT service, and I mean, so on and so forth, and also exposing the, the metadata that, that, we, that we saw earlier. But that's really, uh, yeah, you're a mashup of, of many built-in services uh, in, in Cora. So if you come to the booth, I can uh, at the exit to show you the code. Uh, the new this app also exposes the very same sensors over four apps. So basically, I just add one more service uh, consuming uh, one more uh, component consuming the central service and exposing a four app resource um, uh, using uh, Californium. And in terms of visualization, we've seen uh, we've seen one uh, and could see over WebSocket, but there are actually many. Uh, other ways to, to visualize MQTT data, since, I mean, you have an MQTT Java client, uh, you can do uh, Java FX visualization, Eclipse Bird is pretty nice for doing uh, consolidated reports. There is uh, the, um, the Paho client, the Paho Java client is also nicely wrapped into an Android service. So if you want to use uh, and, and leverage that as part of your um, Android app, you could do that as well. So, I think I had slides for like 50 minutes and I didn't have time to chat. But I'm, 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 um, I'm near the end if you were to, uh, to remember a few things. Uh, go to wikit.org slash Cura. Since you can't read it, <coughs> you can slash uh, the QR code, uh, but it's pretty easy to remember, wikit.org slash Cura. Uh, there is actually a nice tutorial um, that is fully documented to recreate the demo that I have here and didn't work, but that worked very well on floor number two. So uh, please, uh, please come and see it. Um, and we have much more than Cura, Paho, Californium. We have also uh, stuff for uh, home automation, for industrial automation, like SCADA kind of stuff, all leveraging the same, uh, the same building blocks and all working nicely with each other. Uh, so iot.wiki.org slash Java to learn more about the, the, the complete stack. If you want to get involved, make sure to get in touch. Uh, I mean, not necessarily with me uh, personally, but uh, uh, I mean, we have a very active mailing list. Bugzilla waiting for you to be get bugged. And I have a few of those, uh, like the detail, detailed tutorial uh, I mentioned earlier. I have a few um, printed versions. So yeah, I can still see, uh, sorry, but that might be handy. And I have time for minus one question. Do I? <laughs> There's one. That was super fast. I'm yeah. sorry. Yep. It's. I think it's uh, in RAM. Uh, it, it depends what kind of, what kind of uh, OSPI implementation you run. But as far as I remember, I think it's uh, one one hundred megs of RAM total, mm -hmm. and uh, storage-wise, I think it's less than ten megabytes. But then uh, I, you can actually also come on the Eclipse Foundation to, do to, to see one of the Eclipse concierge committers. Okay, I see you nodding. Uh, so if you run on concierge, you can save, uh, you can save more, definitely. Thank you. Yeah.